clicked on this video, you want to know how to take your crown to that next level, I'm going to show you how. Listen, if you don't know who I am, I'm 360 Jeezy. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you do know who I am, hit that like button because today it's about to be informational. It's going to be so jam packed. Like the, the knowledge you're finna receive from the information given. It's gonna take you to that next level to where you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? You might. I'm not saying because the work that you gotta put in is gonna. Stay tuned. This my YouTube, be showing y'all how to get wet. Gotta grind hard, gotta play late. I've been doing it since the eighth grade. So grab your brushes and I'll show you the details about what I, I just got something in the mail to the haters. I don't take nothing to heart. My ways look like a hurricane in the ocean, no shark. Shout out to the waivers that did just before me, but I'm free. All right, you guys, so today we're going to talk about enhancing the crown area, all right? Let's go from the beginning. I'm going to show you guys how to get your crown from looking like this to looking like this. Now, a lot of times as waivers, we want that instant gratification. We want that instant result, all right? It just doesn't work like that. Listen to me. When trying to get waves in that crown area, the best thing I suggest as starting out is that you keep that area thick. Now, now when I say keep the area thick, I'm not pausing when I say this, all right? I mean, keep that area at a higher length. So when you go to the barbershop and you ask for a 1.5 all the way around, make sure you keep that crown area at a 2.5. If you get in a one with the guard open, then make sure you get a two guard with the guard open in that crown area. The reason why you're keeping that area thicker is because you wanna build those waves in that area, all right? Don't wanna cut it the same length because for some reason, when you cut everything down the same length, your crown, it just seems like gets the thinnest, all right? So you wanna make sure that area is thick as possible to retain and gain progress. Now, when building waves around that crown area, first things first, don't think that you have to start out using a baby tress or a brush like the, all right? You don't have to use these at first. Just make sure you go out and get a brush with a point on it. It doesn't have to even be this one. It could be any brush, just make sure it has a point. And you wanna start brushing around your crown area, building those waves first. The last thing you wanna do is start detailing and over swirling your crown. It's just a waste of time. So make sure you use a brush with a point and just start building waves around that area. As you're building those waves, you wanna make sure that you're pushing the forks out of that area. Instead of forcing it, dragging one end to the other, you wanna make sure you're brushing from the inner ring outward on each side. Cause the less force that you have in your crown is the better chance of your pattern being flawless, all right? We all want a good smooth rotation on our crown. So make sure you focus on pushing those forks out of your crown first. So let's talk about forcing your crown. Forcing your crown is something that you do not wanna do. When somebody says that you're forcing your crown, it's usually a bad thing. So I'm gonna give you an example of forcing your crown versus non-forcing your crown. So forcing your crown is when you go in a full 360, dragging the brush all the way around your crown. <laughs> a non-forced crown is when you're brushing your pattern straight outward, not really turning or bending, just starting from your crown and going away from your crown, all while doing it in a 360 pattern. So let's talk about sectioning brushing, all right? Because that's critical when it comes to building your crown and flowing it into the rest of your pattern. Now, I usually look at my crown as a side by itself. You know how you brush your right side, your top, your left, your back, your crown area, your crown is a side all on its own. So I'm gonna show you guys how I section my crown off and as well as brushing it into the rest of my pattern. All right, so when it comes to sectioning brushing, you gotta look at this side as a side all in itself, all right? This side, this side, and this side is totally different from the angles that you're taking all the way around here. I basically call this the parietal ridge for waivers, you know what I mean? I know, I know, the parietal ridge is right here, but as far as like sectioning it off, 
you want to look at your crown as a section all on its own. So the way I brush my crown is I only start from here to the third wave, okay? Then I stop. Only brush to the third wave when I'm brushing all around my crown because I'm going to take some other angles as I brush the rest of my pattern. So the way I brush my right side is I go from here, from the third wave, and brush all the way down my back from the third wave. My left side, same thing from the third wave. Same thing with my top from the third wave down. So as you can see, the crown area is a side all in its own. Now, when it comes to brushing your crown, I like to count my strokes. <laughs> Listen, big paws, but no paws, okay? I like to count my strokes. I like to do 60 on one side, 60 on the other angle. 60 is ultimately the goal when going around my crown. I hope that wasn't a pause moment. Now let's talk about building that inner ring in your crown, which is probably the most important part to finishing your crown. What I like to use is I like to use a baby tress brush, something like this to really detail your crown. Also a brush like this, all right? Something with a point, something like a toothbrush, just something that you can get around your crown and detail work. So building that inner ring, what you wanna do is you wanna brush slightly outward using a baby tress or any brush with a point and just kind of detail my crown using that same method not forcing it not going not taking this and dragging it all the way over here just taking it and going upward straightening out all my angles around that crown then coming in here in the circle opening those hairs up making it look like a circle as much as possible while I'm trying to build and brush around it. You could even get real detail with it and use the rat tail part and just kind of positioning and just kind of position those hairs in the way, in the direction you want it to go in. Best thing you could do is just maintain an open crown because it gives off a better look, especially when battling. You want to make sure you have a mirror, something to where you could zoom in. Um, I like to use my iPad, uh, turn my iPad on, and I'll just zoom uh, from the uh, TikTok app. That's how I basically zoom in and get in detail my crown. But if you don't have that, you can use a mirror with one of those really zoomed in feature where you know you can see your face up close. Use one of those and just go to work when um, detailing your crown. I recommend using an iPad though. So the same way you brush around your crown is how you brush the inner ring, all right? The inner ring is not gonna come overnight, all right? None of this is gonna come overnight, but if you keep training your hair day after day after day, if you're on it, if you're using hard work, dedication, motivation, consistency, the will to keep going when the going gets tough. Listen, if you put in the work, the results are gonna show. Just be patient. So let's talk about woofing, all right? Woofing, as far as the crown goes, it's very important, all right? And you have to get serious with it because you're gonna have to change up some of your angles. Instead of brushing straight outward, you're gonna have to tilt that comb out just a little bit as your hair starts to grow. What you don't wanna do is start swirling it so hard and building that alfalfa in the back. Oh, alfalfa. When you're woofing, you wanna change up your angles because your hair is starting to get longer and it's gonna wrap around that inner ring. So you don't want it to wrap around too hard. So you wanna go a little bit outward with it as you start woofing. Now, after you got all of that out of the way, we have to talk about haircuts. What haircuts you should get, I recommend against the grain. Now, not to say that with the grain is a bad thing, 
But to all my self cutters out there, if you're not experienced and you want to dip and dabble into this self cutting, I would recommend going against the grain way better. The reason why I would say go against the grain is because you could just put on a large guard and just go against the grain. It's going to take off a little bit. Make sure you start off with a higher guard first and then work your way down. Don't use the same guard that you use with the grain against the grain. Don't do it. You'll end up cutting out all your progress. So by going against the grain, you don't really have to worry about anything. All you really need to care about is that the guard doesn't fall off, all right? You could go every which way around your head, around your pattern, just cutting your hair off, and all you gotta do is lay it back down against the grain is probably the safest way to cut your waves down. Now when it comes to with the grain, gonna have to have a little bit experience, all right? But with the grain, as far as cutting the rest of your pattern, it's easy. When it comes to working in that crown area, that's where it becomes difficult. Now, what you wanna do, cut down your hair just like you brush your hair. So the same way you brush is the same way you use that clipper to cut it down, all right? By going in any wrong direction could cause some spots, some some gaps, some overlaps, some, some just, it could get really crazy and you could lose progress and basically you might have to scout. Doing with the grain, one of the things is you're gonna have to make sure that guard is on, all right? Make sure that you're going in that right direction. It's so much tedious stuff that you have to worry about with going with the grain. So you might as well just go against the grain, you know what I mean? So that's why I recommend against the grain for all my self-cut waivers. If you're going to the barber, against the grain cuts is just a more even cut in general, all right? All right, you guys, so basically that's it, man. As far as uh, enhancing your crown area, as far as cutting, all that goes, this is how you do it. Listen, getting waves in the crown area, it doesn't come overnight, all right? Something that you have to work at every single day. If you're not getting at least 30 to an hour sessions in daily, it don't gotta be a whole 30 minutes in one session. It don't gotta be a whole hour in one session. But as long as you break it up amongst that day, you gotta be getting this work in or else it's gonna be a long process, it's gonna be a long road. You just gotta be patient. Listen, if you liked the video, you found it informative, listen, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, all right? It's more videos to come. It's your boy 360 Jeezy, we out. Peace. Oh, and to all my subscribers out there, listen, listen, listen. If you haven't been getting a notification to my videos, listen, all you gotta do is unsubscribe, subscribe, hit the notification bell, make sure you hit that notification bell and everything is be well, everything will be well, everything will be swell, everything, you may not go to jail, you may not end up getting out on bail, but you know what I'm saying? It depends on how your pops is or how your mom's is. You might have to stay in there for a minute, depending on what the crime was. But you know what I'm saying? As long as you got the... All right.